Good morning, Real Life Church, and welcome to Boost this morning, day 35 of our book of Acts. And of course, this is the famous passage of Paul and Silas in prison. One day as we were going down to the place of prayer, we met a slave girl who had a spirit that enabled her to tell the future. She earned a lot of money for her masters by telling fortunes. She followed Paul and the rest of us shouting, these men are servants of the most high God and they have come to tell you how to be saved. This went on day after day until Paul got so exasperated that he turned and said to the demon within her, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her and instantly it left her. Her master's hopes of wealth were now shattered, so they grabbed Paul and Silas and dragged them before the authorities at the marketplace. The whole city is in an uproar because of these Jews, they shouted to the city officials. They are teaching customs that are illegal for us Romans to practice. A mob quickly formed against Paul and Silas and the city officials ordered them stripped and beaten with wooden rods. They were severely beaten and then they were thrown into prison. The jailer was ordered to make sure they didn't escape. So the jailer put them into the inner dungeon and clamped their feet in the stocks. Around midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God and the other prisoners were listening. Suddenly there was a massive earthquake and the prison was shaken to its foundations. All the doors immediately flew open and the chains of every prisoner fell off. The jailer woke up to see the prison doors wide open. He assumed the prisoners had escaped, so he drew his sword to kill himself. But Paul shouted to him, stop, don't kill yourself, we're all here. The jailer called for lights and ran to the dungeon and fell down trembling before Paul and Silas. Then he brought them out and asked, sirs, what must I do to be saved? They replied, believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved along with everyone in your household. And they shared the word of the Lord with him and with all who lived in his household. Even at that hour of the night, the jailer cared for them and washed their wounds. Then he and everyone in his household were immediately baptized. He brought them into his house and set a meal before them. And he and his entire household rejoiced because they all believed in God. The next morning, the city official sent the police to tell the jailer, let those men go. So the jailer told Paul, the city officials have said you and Silas are free to leave. Go in peace. But Paul replied, they have publicly beaten us without a trial and put us in prison. And we are Roman citizens. So now they want us to leave secretly? Certainly not. Let them come themselves to release us. When the police reported this, the city officials were alarmed to learn that Paul and Silas were Roman citizens. So they came to the jail and apologised to them. Then they brought them out and begged them to leave the city. When Paul and Silas left the prison, they returned to the home of Lydia. There they met with the believers and encouraged them once more. Then they left town. This is an epic uh, passage of scripture. It's got everything. It's got earthquakes. It's got miracles. It's got salvation. This is the most incredible passage of scripture where God demonstrates his supernatural power and ability, not only to uh, rescue um, these guys out of prison, but also uh, to see that the jailer through this circumstance actually comes to know the Lord as his personal saviour and his whole household. And there's just so much in this to unpack. But what I love about this is the part that actually says, around midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. And this speaks to me of the power of thanksgiving and prayer. That as, you know, they, they find themselves, they must have been in agony from the beating that they got with wooden rods. And yet they chose in their circumstance to praise the Lord, to sing hymns and to worship and come with a heart of thanksgiving before God. And this unleashed God's supernatural power in their circumstance. I wonder for you and I today, as we choose to come with hearts of thanksgiving in prayer and, and just in worship before him, what he will unleash for every one of us in our circumstances as he did it for them, so he will do it for us, Real Life Church. So I want to encourage you 
uh, to enter into his courts with praise today. When you're going about your day, choose to have attitude of gratitude, choose to have a heart full of thanksgiving and see what God will un unleash uh, supernaturally on your behalf today in Jesus' name. I'm going to pray for you as we close. Lord, I thank you for this inspiring passage of scripture that there's just so many gold nuggets of truth that we find here. But Lord, today we want to thank you. Thank you for our salvation. Thank you for every blessing that you place in our life. And I just pray that as we go about our day with an attitude of gratitude, so you will supernaturally act in our circumstances on our behalf. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, have a sensational day and I'll talk to you again soon. Mwah.